Here we go now. Here we go now. Bum, bum, bum. I don't even know what that's from. Let me clear my throat. Bum, 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 bum. I don't know the artist. Okay. I, I can't. I was about to say finally, but I did win the last one, so that's fine. Robbie, he's won. He won six prior, so I think I'm owed a few. A few. A few. I'll keep this. At least one. Likewise, I'll keep. All right. Let's see. I, I might as well tell you, since I know your deck and that might affect my decisions in the match, uh, my deck is Merfolk. Yavamaya Merfolk. If you don't know what that means, you're about to find out. So, I'm sorry? I'm still working on Merfolk deck. Oh, Merfolk is sick, dude. Uh, I'm T1 Glisterolf on YouTube, but when Infect got nerfed pretty hard, I, uh, I decided to switch to another deck or at least add something on, and I decided Merfolk would be my, my secondary. So we're okay. gonna go turn one island. Infect. Yeah, good old Infect. We'll Your life Merfolk. total is actually 10, is essentially what Infect reads. You think it's 20, it's actually 10. Thoughtseize, okay, cool. Well, this is Merfolk, so I don't know that there are any great choices, but Unclaimed Territory, Mutavolt, Mutavolt. I hear it pronounced both ways. Mirror Regery, Silvergill Adept, Merfolk Branchwalker, Master of the Pearl Trident. I think there is a right answer, but there's not a you will just blow me out of the game answer. So I'm sort them by curve. Two ones and then two twos. Mm. Hey, this is where I need those dual decks. Master. Master. Master of Puppets is pulling. Okay. Go ahead. Shout out to Metallica. Unclaimed Territory naming Merfolk, mm -hmm. obviously. Just spoiler alert if I play an Unclaimed Territory, it's Merfolk. Um. We're going to play Silvergill Adept, reveal, pick one, draw a card, and then I'll pass the turn. I play reveal, that's not something you necessarily have to do, but as a courtesy. Because in a competitive game, people would instead just write down the cards in your hand. Inquisition. <laughs> you see Phantasmal Image, Ether Vial. So, once again, um, Mutable out, uh, sort by curve, Ether Vial, Merfolk Branchwalker, Phantasmal Image, Mirror Regery. Yep, take the Lord. I don't blame you, that's a good choice for a reason, especially the Mutable in hand. Uh, uh, I would like to cast an Ether Vial. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to keep this down with the mana. I'm going to keep this way over here where I can keep a, a counter on it, on the deck. Hmm. I maybe missequenced that. <clears throat> I would like to attack. Fail to find. <laughs> There's one <laughs> island in the deck. I will let you know. There's one island in the deck. Would you like to shuffle? <laughs> okay. I will realize that the... Alright. Merfolk, Branchwalker. Mm -hmm. Trigger. Reveal the top card of my library. If it's a land, put it in my hand. Otherwise, put a plus one, plus one counter, yada, yada, yada. That doesn't matter. 
Okay, cool. I'm gonna check this to make sure it's still centered. Robbie, are you sure you don't want some? Because there's something like a third of the lid. <laughs> yeah, okay. Alright. Try not to be rude. Cool. Um. Well, if you insist on not being rude. Aha. I'll pass the turn. It's a good problem to have. <laughs> At least it's off curve. At least you didn't cast it on curve. Go ahead. Alright. Untap. Upkeep. Draw. Ooh. Ooh. Unclaim territory mutavolt. I like to cast it as a copy of Phantasmal Image copying Merfolk Branchwalker. Mm -hmm. So when that happens, reveal the top card of my library it is not a land. So plus one plus one counter, mm -hmm. and I can put that card back mm -hmm. on top or in my graveyard. Whichever I so choose. So plus one plus one counter. And then Warping Whale. I'm sorry, I put it on the wrong one. You're right. Effectively, it ends up being the same thing, but you are correct, because this one is treated differently for the purpose of targeting. Alright. You are so far away from zero. Hmm. I think I actually would like to put it into my graveyard. Warping Whale, as strong as it is, and you can see a reason why this is different from a, a traditional Merfolk list, it has a Warping Whale in it. I think I, I need it in the graveyard against Bitter Blossom. Effectively, it's Scry. One. Okay, so, I would like to cast a Curse Catcher. Roar. Hear me roar. Would you like to respond? Which one? I would like to swing at you for two. Yep. So it ended up mattering quite a bit, actually, that I had the counter on the right creature. Alright, um, I would like to pass the turn. I'm going to turn. Alright. can't see YouTube, but I'm stretching quite a lot. Uh, we'll do it from the top this time. Hi, my friend. Boink. Take your turn. That is an expedition. If I may show it off to the camera really quickly. That is an Expedition Godless Shrine. Look at how beautiful. Oh, pfft, glare. Look at how beautiful that thing is. It's gorgeous. Okay, fair enough. Pardon me for showing off your excellent cards. Alright, cool. 13. Alright. Swamp. Insert damnation here. Insert regret here. We'll do it from the top again. Sworn into first country. Results? 
Yeah, sadly, Curse Catcher only targets instants and sorceries. Oh, only yeah. counters instants and sorceries. So you're good. Regardless, you're good. I mean, you're good regardless. You, you can't say you two. Shenanigans. Uh, just want to go to five. Ooh, okay. Yeah, so it's a 2-1 with lifelink? Yep. And go ahead. I already untapped it. That's incorrect, but I already untapped it. This is a casual game. Normally, YouTube, this wouldn't actually matter, but I'm going to treat it, at least from my side, as if it's competitive REL, where I just made a mistake. So, in that case, I don't get to go back. It's supposed to be end of turn tap either aisle, but I missed that. So, we're having fun, though. In my defense, we're having fun. Yeah, I'm sure about that. Alright. Alright, my friend. I would like to activate Moon of All. Mm -hmm. I would like to. Hi, ya! Swing. <laughs> that's that's exactly what it sounds like. Swing at you for eight. At me. At you. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. At you. Yes, yeah. that's correct. We'll block curse catcher. All right, jump block. Shenanigans. I will use the island to tap another curse to tap for another curse catcher, and then I will pass the turn. I'm gonna go quickly not take that. One, two, three. Who needs to look at their deck while they're playing their game? Four, five. So I take five. There's the other curse catcher. You do indeed. And then on your upkeep, you'll take one, go to seven, play another fairy rogue, play another fairy rogue. And yes, although missing the trigger, missing the ability was intentional, was unintentional rather, missing the trigger was intentional. Okay, there's, oh god. She's gonna go to five, we're gonna make a soldier. Okay. Soldier boy enters the battlefield. He's gonna go to three, we're gonna make a vampire. Okay, well, when suddenly we have a full That's board. Alright. Top decks of glory. Top decks of glory. Uh -huh. Now, this time I would like to actually not miss my trigger. Go to two. Hey! Hey! We got there! Sort of. Unclaimed Territory, we'd like to name Merfolk. Mm -hmm. And now, since there are no cards you don't know about, I'd like to pick up my hand. Alright. Whale. Whale. This is the sound it makes. They are all swinging at Soren is six. Elspeth is eight. They're all swinging at you. At me? Yes, at you specifically. Um, Super Friends player, he has to ask it. It's fair enough. It's understood. Alright. Block. So, 1-1 so, one, one Soldier to the 1-1 one, one Curse Catcher. Um, this is a 3-2 and this is a 2-1, just to clarify. I should probably do this, just to make it a little clearer. It is a branch walker. I'm oh, sorry. Walk like that. All right. Final answer. Yep. All right. In response, Ether Vial, Master of the Pearl Trident, the classic Merfolk trick. All right. So you're a two-two. You are a. Let's see. You are a three-two. Now you're a four-three. Take and three. take three. Put you down to four. And 
I will pass the turn. So Four, just to make three. sure you came in at four. Good. Okay. Just making sure. A of the RK post tears on the fairy rug. I am curious. I'm sorry. While I while I bother with this real quick. I was looking to see if those tears, actually they're not tears, there's some sort of, what would you call that, my friends, spores on the side, or are I those just cheap know. colors? Alright, lingering. Okay, okay. It's a control deck, but it doesn't have any islands. That's unfortunate. Lingering results. Yes, my friend, no mana leaks from this deck. You can be pretty sure of that. Haunter. Haunter. Goes to six. Makes another soldier, I'm assuming. Yeah. Go for it. Alright. Okay. Last turn. Let me think. I would like to keep either violin too. Now, one issue with this particular list is that it does not have spreading seas. However, I would like to cast Merfolk Branchwalker. Mm -hmm. Information. Reveal the top card. It's a land. Add it to hand. Cool. Not the land I was looking for. Play of gemstone caverns. Okay, five. Well, there's lots of trading that's bound to happen here. Unfortunately, your creatures have lifelink. Regardless of what I do here, you're about to gain one, two, three, ten. Four creatures at the very least. I was oh. counting a different. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're right. I was counting a different metric. Uh, one from Elspeth, two from Lingering Souls, and then another from Bitter Blossom. So let's say that I swing out with all my creatures, all five, against your five creatures. You'll still gain four creatures after that interaction. Okay, but I have a master of the gun trident. Hmm. There's lots of trading to be done. Lots of trading to be done. And you know the card in my hand, because you just saw it. It's Botanical Sanctum. If I wait a turn, it's essentially the same situation, except I have one more creature and you have one more creature. And I know what's in my deck, which makes it a little harder, harder oddly enough, to play around your deck. So, super chump blocks. If I swing with five creatures, you block with five creatures. Gain a bunch of life. Don't kill quite all my creatures, but pretty darn close to it. And then gain a ton of life. This is a tough spot for Merfolk to be in. This is not where Merfolk envisioned itself being in. Alright, that being the case... We're going to swing at Soren, actually. The entire Ething team is swinging at Soren. All four of him. So Master is a 2-2? Two -two? Master does not buff itself, that's correct. Alright. One spirit on Master. Yep. Uh, another 
another spirit on oh. vault. Uh, another s spirit on vault, you said? Yeah. Okay. A fairy rogue on curse catcher. Yeah, that's exactly what I expected. Okay, so to be clear, these two will trade. These two will trade. These two will trade. Th Mutavolt will beat this one. And Phantasmal Image, Mir Mervic Branch Walker with a plus one plus one counter um, will also trade, I believe, because it's a 2 1 plus 1 plus 1 trading with a 2 1. So that will just leave Mutavolt. As I as I but understand, but he does with the damage on Vault go down to zero then, so he's no longer on the field to buff the Merfolks. Oh, you're right. You're right. So when Merfolk tried when Master of the Pearl Triton leaves the battlefield, its buff goes away. So this one will go from being a three three to a two two, and it'll have two damage marked on it. So it will die as well. That's correct. Okay. So basically, we both had a field wipe, except I get to keep a, a branch walker, and he keeps to keep. He gets to keep a one-one fairy. Keeps to keep. That's what I meant to say. So right. yeah, all my things done until my right. That's correct. I didn't have any and then I will pass the turn. Okay. Regardless of whether I targeted you or Soren, I was anticipating essentially that same result. She's going to go to seven. Fair enough. Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy. Boba Fett. Flashback of Wingering. One of the Fets. I'm assuming Boba Fett. Flashback of Wingering. And I'm going to say here. Safe to go ahead and make another map. I agree. You see that I'm a blue green deck. You probably don't think that I have Wraths. I don't blame you. That's probably the correct play. <coughs> oh, excuse me. That on the other hand. <laughs> go ahead. Alright. Gonna keep you at two. I'm gonna break the Reed Duke rule. No, I'm gonna concede here, unfortunately. Let's see. So the new card is Cavern of Souls. I only have a, a branch walker. The next card is Cavern. Yeah, we were we were done. Yes, and then the next was Ether Vial, and then the next was Cavern. One, two, we were three, done. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, we were, we were four, super fourteen dumb. damage that one turn. Yeah, I'm gonna call that game. <laughs> Here we go. Here comes the next. Game. I hope I cut that correctly. Given my luck against you, despite the fact that for quite some time you had been winning the die roll, you've been having to mulligan more than I have, so I hope that's more consequential. Here's to finding out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I will keep. Super fast keep. Yeah, okay, I called it. I called it. Alright, so, while he's shuffling, this is what we have going on a little bit later on. Although I'm on the play, of course. Which matters so much when this is your starting hand. Yeah. This is actually, while a great card, especially relevant given that this is what we have to start off. Top decks notwithstanding, what I would do for a scry right now. All right. <coughs> oh, we we've quite a shuffle to go. Well, in the meantime, let me be putting this up. I notice a uh, a difference that the two of us have is that you put your decks with the cards facing inwards. I put them with the cards facing outwards, like this. It's fine, it doesn't really matter. I just noticed that. 
I do it because it allows me to better recognize what the deck is. I'm just used to doing that that way I can try and conceal cards sure. from my opponent. And that's the that's the correct thing to do when you're in a competitive setting. So you're you're right about that. When I have a, a gauntlet style setting, it makes more sense to do it that way because I recognize what the deck is more quickly. But of course in, in your context that makes more sense. Alright. Close enough. That's that's Fair enough. Let's see what six and a half grants. Yeah. That's about as quickly as I can clap. There's some people that are so hardcore about that they put, I guess, chalk on their hands so that when they do this, it can go more quick. Oh, all right. I'm going to hurt myself, but I'm going to say six and a half again. I know it should be five and a half, but it, it might make the game a bit more interesting if we have six and a half again. And then if it goes on after that, five and a half. Probably one land in four drops. Ooh. Yeah, that, that's, uh... Ooh. If you had gone to five, though, you still would have probably shifted it. Yeah, probably. I shifted it thinking I was going to five. If your four drops happen to include Damnation or Wrath of God, honestly, in that situation against a deck that you know, I might have included it, though, on the other hand, you know that I have Warping Wheel, which counters sorceries, so maybe not. I'm just not being able to guarantee the lands, though. Yeah. No, I mean, you're, you're of course correct. I'm just trying to think about it beyond that. Okay. Yeah. All right. I would like to play Yavamaya Coast, hence the name Yavamaya Merfolk. Pass the turn. It's a three color Merfolk deck. Three. Yes, forever. Alright, so my other two lands are Mutavolt, 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 Silvergill Adept, Phantasmal Image, Double Master. So pick your two draw. Silvergill. That's exactly the correct answer. That is the correct answer. Well, better late than never, Chalice on one. Okay. Chalice on, I said one. I hope that's visible enough, just in case it's not. I'm going to switch it to you. And then I will pass the turn. No more paths or fatal pushes from you. You jerk. You jerk. Insert bitter blossom here. Go ahead. Okay. Put you to 15. God the Shrine. Pass turn. He's not getting a basic. He doesn't... I have no Blood Moons. I don't think you're expecting a choke from the Yavamaya Coast Buddha Vault deck. That's something like expecting a light jab from Muhammad Ali. Or Mike Tyson. That's that's more appropriate. Expecting a light jab from Mike Tyson. D 
tech inch, okay. Hmm. Resolves. Haunter. Okay. Hi, y'all. Kakatekoi, come at me, bro. I'm missing so many tokens. All right. This does not look good for T1 Glistener Owl. At all. Go ahead. You would not believe what my hand looks like right now. Actually, you would, because you can see Double Master with only one colored source right now. That would make things a little bit easier, admittedly. Field, hand, just to clarify. Normally this would be easier because I'd be holding the hand in my hand, but against decks that can see my hand, I prefer to play revealed. It saves them the time of actually writing down what's in my hand. So until I cast a brainstorm or something like such, I'd play it this way. <clears throat> yep. Light it out. Resolves. I don't have a spell pierce. Got a five. Where's spell pierce when you need it? You know, I'll play it out. I'll play it out, actually. And for eight? Go okay. Ahead. Well, that, that shifted quickly. I mean, sure. Phyrexian Revoker. Results? Mm -hmm. Naming Soren Solemn Visitor. Okay. In before Fatal Push or Path to Exile, because those are cards I still expect. Pass turn. In before Wrath of God. Wrath of Zod. Souls. Dark Souls had a story, you ask? <laughs> Indeed. Alright, alright. One for four. Go ahead. Perhaps your vision was obfuscated by myriad deaths. Alright. Lord, 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 Ether Vial countered off Chalice. Good games. <laughs> the story of that game is if I had gotten double blue. 
Okay. Well, fair enough. Good games, man. Good games. So obviously Chalice is a side game. <laughs> it wasn't the only side in though. Frick's and Revoker is actually coming in. Chalice to keep you from playing your Path to Exile and Fatal Pushes. That's the idea, anyway. And there's also a Ghost Quarter. Just a one of to deal with Shambling Bed, of course. Easy enough. I assume for you that's a four of. This is just one of for me. What? A shambling bed. Two. Oh, okay. Nailed it. They are my only forced tap lands. I see what you're saying. So concealed courtyard sometimes comes in untapped, sometimes not. But shambling bed is the only one that forces itself to come in tap. Yeah. Okay. So obsidian ghost council. So help me understand, please. Cause in case this I got there. Um. On the Obsidot? I'm yeah. About. I'm trying to figure out why Obsidot gets played in some matches and not others. Uh, that one was just uh, in case I got there because it can be a draining game when you're building up your board. But at the same time, I don't have to exile them, so it can be a big blocker. Okay, so this is a may, not a must. Yeah. Okay. So what tricked me for the longest time is I figured if he wasn't a blocker, he wouldn't help you against the Merfolk, but if this is a May, and yeah. of course it is, then you could keep a 5-5 five five back. So I took out, because you don't have... And I with Soren, it can become a 6-5. Even better. I didn't anticipate small creatures, so I took out four Spatial Contortion and four Warping Whale. Now, Warping Whale was a serious consideration for keeping in because of countering Wrath of God and Damnation. But... I, I decided it wasn't as good as Chalice of the Void, as well as... Let's see, what else did I have in here? Ghost Quarter and Phyrexian Revoker. You have so many Planeswalkers, Revoker is great, and Ghost Quarter to deal with Shambling Bands. In hindsight, maybe I keep in a Warping Whale in exchange for the Ghost Quarter, because again, a Warping Whale deals with Wraths. I'm not sure, though. Alright, it's something I'll have to think about more later on. Thank you very much.